Bank of Canada is committed to destroying the real estate market. We got 80,000 mortgages that are going to hit the trigger rates. Wars happening, protests, supply chain being disrupted, and inflation hit 8.1% in Canada uh, in June. So let's talk about what you need to do as a buyer or a seller to get ahead in this market. And you know what? This topic needs a nice cup of coffee. So let's go make that before we get into it. I got my coffee, so let's talk about this. So Bank of Canada raised uh, the overnight lending rate by another 75 basis points, which brings the overnight lending rate to a 3.25% right now. So in their announcement, they said, given the outlook for inflation policy interest rate, we need to rise further. As the effects of tighter monetary policy work throughout the economy, we will be assessing how much higher interest rates need to go to return inflation to target, which is the 2%. Very similar news came from the feds. This means we're gonna continue to see interest rates rise, potentially. Inflation takes a little bit of time. There's a lag between taking the action and, and the actual inflation going down. Now, buyers and sellers are confused. Should we jump in? Should we wait? What happens? As you all know, at the beginning of this year, inflation started running wild, printed too much money, uh, supply chain disruption, Energy prices increased, printed too much money. There's a war, there's protests, China's economy going to collapse probably, and we printed a little bit too much money. So that all leads to you going to the grocery store and realizing eggs are now $18. To counteract this, uh, Bank of Canada started increasing the interest rates. You wanna look at interest rates as the brake pedal, inflation as the speed of a bus that we're all sitting on, and Bank of Canada is the driver. Some of us have their seat belts on, some of us are holding on tight to a pole because, you know, it's, it's not enough uh, space for everybody you know, on this special bus. So the bus was not going any fast. Bank of Canada pressed on the gas pedal, which is printing money, and things started to move, but suddenly they realized they pressed on the gas a little too much, printed too much money, and with things changing, such as someone cutting us off, such as a war or a disruption in the... Uh, in the supply chain, we needed to break and we really needed to break hard, which is increasing interest rates. So Bank of Canada started pressing on brakes since the beginning of this year. And if you're going fast and you press on the gas really hard, some of us are going to fly off our seats and some of us are going to fall. If we're standing and trying to hold on very tight. So brace yourself. Obviously, with these changes, the real estate market is being affected. So sales are down. Uh, last month, the activity was almost half of what it was last year, and prices also went down. However, if you're a buyer and you're in the market, the reality is a little different than what you see on the news. You'd expect to go into the market as if it's a Boxing Day weekend, and you're gonna get steep discounts, everything's for sale, absolutely great. However, if you are in the market, you're gonna notice something slightly different. During Black Friday and uh, Boxing Day weekend, if you have $100 and you're holding on to your $100, and when the sale happens, you go buy more stuff, that's amazing. But if also the $100 that you had is now 50, you're gonna realize you were probably able to buy a big screen TV back then, and now you might have to settle for a slightly smaller TV because you thought when the prices come down, you're gonna be able to get more. That's not the case, because most people who purchase real estate, uh, they should and do get financing, which means you'd need to qualify for it, and you're taking a loan, and when interest rates rise, what you qualify for drops. So what does that mean to you as a buyer? This doesn't apply to investors, but if you're someone who's looking to buy something to move into, you're gonna it's gonna be your first home, or selling your current home and you're going to upsize or downsize the advantage you have in this market is that you'll be able to go in see a property that you like and put an offer conditional on financing uh, you'd be able to do inspections for a freehold and you'll be able to check the status uh, certificate after putting the offer um, and this was very different when we were in a seller's market in February where we were just putting offers like no tomorrow with no conditions and we were doing 
as much of the homework as we needed to before putting an offer. This reduces the stress and gives you a little bit of chance to negotiate and get something that you really like. So as a buyer, the first thing you should do is contact the real estate agent, go through the process of getting a pre-approval and kind of cap your uh, monthly payments at whatever the rate is. This will give you a little bit of time to start shopping. And the next thing you should do is start looking at what's going on in the market. Not everything that's being listed right now is a fantastic deal. Most sellers that are listing right now, the initial confusion is done. They're in the process of first selling their home and see how much they'll get for it and then go and upsize or downsize. If they don't sell it or if they don't get what they're looking for, they might not end up selling. However, there will be points where someone needs to sell and those are the properties that you're looking for if you're looking for a deal. And for you to be able to identify those is to be in the market looking with your pre approval with your pre approval ready so that if you see something you like you can pull the trigger. So if you're a seller, uh, you might look at different options. In this case, you might want to hold on to your property slightly longer, rent it out if you have a pre construction um, reaching occupancy or it's about to close it might be best if you actually close on the transaction instead of looking to assign it this is not the market to cash out and this is definitely not the market to downsize um, if you are in that situation and you're looking to downsize it might not work in your favor however if you're looking to upsize that's this is the best time to do it because the gap between the different property classes decreased which means if you have a condo and you want to go to a townhouse or if you're in a townhouse and you want to buy a freehold detached uh, property, this might be the best time to do it. Now, everyone's situation is slightly different. And if you're buying and selling your primary home, meaning you're going to live in it, doesn't matter how up and down the market goes because you're going to end up living in it. However, if you're looking to invest, in that case, you want to look at different opportunities in the market. For that, it's a bit more complicated. So reach out to me if you're looking to do that or if you know someone who's interested in investing, um, send them my contact info. If you want to get one thing out of this video is this. Contact a real estate agent, me, I'll leave my uh, info in the description. Start the process. The only way to identify a good deal is to be in the market and be ready to pull the trigger when the right time comes. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.